hello and welcome back so with this video we are going to start a series in which we will be discussing english literature through mcqs and in the first video of this series we are talking about age of chaucer okay so let us get started the first question is the age of chaucer is from okay so you have to guess you have to tell me uh, the lifespan of chaucer or the time period that we know as the age of chaucer okay so i will give you 3 seconds uh, to choose your answer okay so the right answer for this question is option number c okay and the age of chaucer is from 1340 to 1400 okay so the explanation of this question goes like uh, it talks about geoffrey chaucer Okay, Geoffrey Chaucer was born in the reign of Edward III, uh, and he lived through that of Richard II, and he died a year after Henry IV ascended the throne. Okay, so his his lifespan covers a period of glaring social contrast and political change. So if if you might know that uh, we refer the age of Chaucer as the age of transition because there is a lot of political and socio cultural activity going. going on in the age of chaucer okay okay the second question is the first creator of english versification is okay the first option is john gower second is geoffrey chaucer third is john wyclif and uh, fourth is william tyndale okay so who was the first creator of english versification so it is quite an easy question Uh, i hope i hope that you have already guessed the answer so the right answer for this question is geoffrey chaucer okay chaucer is credited with inventing the first characteristically characteristically english stanza form the rhyme royal later later popular english forms were the ballad the sonnet the stanza developed by edmund spenser called spenserian stanza or spenserian sonnet okay blank verse became the great dramatic line in the 16th century okay so the next uh, next question is okay so the third question the prologue to the canterbury tales gives the portrait of okay so you have to tell me how many uh, pilgr uh, pilgrims are there in the prologue of the canterbury tales okay okay so the right answer for this question is 30 pilgrims okay so in the general prologue some 30 pilgrims are introduced and uh, according to the prologue chaucer's intention was to write four stories from the perspectives of each pilgrim to each on the way way to and uh, from their ultimate destinations uh, saint thomas becket shrine making for a total of 120 stories so chaucer has uh, so chaucer had planned Uh, to write one twenty stories, but he could not do so. That is a different thing. So okay, moving uh, moving forward with the next question. Okay, the fourth question is, Chaucer imported dash from France. Okay, so this is also a very easy question. I hope you have guessed the answer. Okay, the right answer is. Decasyllabic line. Okay, decasyllabic quatrain is a poem, is a poetic form in which each stanza consists of four lines of ten syllables each. Usually, the rhyme scheme of A A B B or A B A B. Examples of decasyllabic quatrain in heroic couplets appear in some of the earliest texts in the English language, as Geoffrey Chaucer created the heroic couplet. and used it in the in the canterbury tales okay so the next question is okay the fifth question the composition of chaucer's seven line stanza is okay so we have to tell the composition of uh, the seven line stanza which was uh, used by chaucer so the options are a b a b b c I'm sorry. A B A B A B C. The second option is B A B A B A C. 
ऑप्शन सी इज ए ए बी बी सी 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 एंड ऑप्शन डी इज ए बी ए बी बी सी सी ओके द राइट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ओके ऑप्शन ऑप्शन डी इज द राइट आंसर ए बी ए बी बी सी सी ओके सो चौसर इन स्टैंड एज पॉपुलराइज बाय द पोएट ऑफ द सेम नेम जॉफरी चौसर कंटेन सेवन लाइन्स दीज लाइन्स फॉलो अ राइम स्कीम ऑफ ए बी ए बी बी सी सी एंड कैन बी सेपरेटेड इन टू अ टेरसेट एंड टू कपलेट्स टू कपलेट्स और अ कॉटरेन एंड अ टेरसेट Usually the stanzas, the, uh, the stanzas also use iambic pentameter. Okay. Okay. Moving to the next question, the sixth question. Sixth, sixth question goes like, excluding Chaucer, how many pilgrims participated in the pilgrimage? So, so again, it is a very easy question. Uh, option A, thirty-nine. Option B, nineteen. Option C, twenty-nine. And option D, thirty. so excluding chaucer removing chaucer how many pilgrims participated in the pilgrimage the right answer for this question is 29 c okay the narrator makes one and he meets 29 other travelers that makes a total of 30 people with a specific intention of making the pilgrimage to the canterbury in order to visit the shrine of saint thomas becket so in in the total there were 30 pilgrims and uh, if you remove chaucer from the from the total of 30 pilgrims uh, 29 pilgrims will remain okay okay moving on to the seventh question the pilgrim uh, the pilgrimage referred to the prologue in the canterbury tales is okay option a an act of gratitude to cowdell option b an act of gratitude to martyr becket option c an act of penance uh, to shrine lordes and option d an act of penance to tindal again an easy question okay the right answer for this question is an act of gratitude to martyr becket okay the pilgrimage referred to the in, referred to in the prologue of the canterbury tales is an act of gratitude towards martyr becket Okay, pilgrims travel to visit the remains of Saint Thomas Becket, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was murdered in 1170 by the Knights of King Henry II. Okay, the next question. The prologue talks about. Okay, so what does the prologue talk about? Option A: December as the cruelest month. Option B. October as the awful month option C April as the sweetest month or option D August as the rainy month so again it is an easy question i hope you have guessed the answer by now and the right answer for this question is option C April as the sweetest month okay spring time symbolizes renewal and new life indicating the pilgrims are looking for spiritual renewal so in the prologue of the canterbury tales uh, chaucer has taken a great time in explaining the month of april uh, which is also a spring time in england which symbolizes renewal and new life and it indicates the pre- uh, the pilgrims who are looking for a spiritual renewal okay moving on to the next question the first character described in the prologue is okay again an easy question okay option a a knight b a miller option c a teacher or option d a professor okay so the right answer for this question is option a a knight the knight the first pilgrim chaucer describes in the general prologue is the knight and the teller of the first tale okay the knight represents the ideal of medieval christian man at arms he has participated in no less than 15 of the great crusades of his era brave experienced and prudent the narrator greatly admires him okay the narrator who is chaucer himself he is a great admirer of the knight okay moving on to the next question okay the 
टेंथ क्वेश्चन द प्रायोरेस इन द प्रोलॉग स्वर इन द नेम ऑफ ओके सो प्रायोरेस स्वर्स इन द नेम ऑफ ऑप्शन ए जीजस ऑप्शन बी मेरी ऑप्शन सी सेंट लॉय और ऑप्शन डी सेंट एंटनी ओके सो द राइट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन सी सेंट लॉय ओके सो दीज एलिमेंट्स कंबाइन टू शो अ क्लियर पिक्चर ऑफ द प्रायोरेस द प्रायोरेस इज अ शैलो विंडिक्टिव अनक्रिस्टियन चाइल्डिश एंड इमेच्योर वुमन शी इज द एंटीथीसिस ऑफ अ ट्रूली पायोस नन ऑफ द मिडल एज सो द कैरेक्टर ऑफ द प्रायोरेस इज ऑफ सटायर ऑन ऑन द एज एंड चौसर हैज डिपिक्टेड द कैरेक्टर ऑफ द प्रायोरेस एज कंप्लीटली अपोजिट to that of a of a usual or a mundane prayers which were there in the time of chaucer okay moving on to the next question okay the gold brooch that on the prayers in the prologue wears has the alphabet okay so what is the alphabet uh, which is there in the gold brooch that the prayers is wearing in the prologue okay option a d that symbolizes or option or option d that stands for divinity option b b that stands for bible a that stands for amor vincit omnia e that stands for experientia docet okay so the right answer for this question is option c answer a that stands for amor vincit omnia Okay, so what does this term mean? It means love conquers all. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Okay, the monk in the prologue refers. Ah, uh, the monk in the prologue prefers eating. Okay, so what does the monk prefers eating in the prologue? Option A, fried chicken. Option B, roasted swan. Option C, garnished fish. Or option D. मटन करी ओके सो द राइट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन बी रोस्टेड स्वैन विद मंग्स पोर्ट्रेट वी सी अनदर सटायर ऑफ रिलीजियस फिगर्स हु आर सपोज टू लिव अ मोनेस्टिक लाइफ ऑफ डिप्रिवेशन एंड हार्ड वर्क बट इन स्टेड लिव अ लाइफ ऑफ लग्जूरी एंड ईज सो द चौसर इज एक्चुअली सटायराइजिंग और इज क्रिटिकिंग the system of the time where the monk uh, is is meant to behave in a in a manner or is or the monk is meant to live a life in a manner but uh, in in real life the monks are living a life of luxury and ease so chaucer is actually critiquing his times okay moving on to the next question in the prologue who carried gifts like sorry for the typing mistake who carried gifts like small pen knife uh, to be given to young housewives as gifts okay so option a friar option b monk option c prioress or option d frankly so the right answer for this question is okay option a friar the friar who is named hubert in the general prologue takes liberty by taking from the poor and ingratiating himself to the upper class the friar does not take his vows of poverty and celibacy seriously as he dresses in expensing expensive clothing charges money for confessions and corrupts innocent young maiden the friar he is again, again the friar is uh, acting against his profession against his uh, duties he is also a corrupt man and uh, the chaucer again as we see as we have seen in the earlier characters he is critiquing the job of the friar okay moving on to the next question okay in the prologue in the prologue eglantine is the name of which character Okay, Eglantine is the name of which character? Okay, option A, wife of Bath. Option B, merchant's wife. Option C, 
progress or option D cook okay the right answer for this question is option C the progress in the journal in the general prologue names uh, the progress as Madame Eglantine and describes her impeccable table manners and soft-hearted ways her portrait suggests her portrait suggests she is likely in religious life as a means of social advancement given her aristocratic manners and uh, mispronounced French okay moving on to the next question a uh, question number 15 who is shown as ideal character loving his books and Aristotle option a shipman option B the clerk option C the monk or option D the Franklin so again an easy question I hope you have uh, guessed the right answer and uh, the right answer for this question is option B the clerk the clerk is a poor student of philosophy having spent his money on books and learning rather than on fine clothes he is a threadbare and van he speaks little but uh, when he does his words are wise and full of moral virtue so the clerk is actually a very clever student okay as Chaucer has described him in the prologue okay so moving on to the next question uh, question number 16 is who is shown loyal to all her five husbands and the young man waiting outside okay so the option A is uh, Miller's wife Option B, doctor's wife. Option C, the wife of Bath. Or option D, option D, the cook. Okay, the right answer for this question is Option C, the wife of Bath. So Chaucer uses irony and satire to challenge the church's operation of women by allowing the wife of Bath to speak freely about sex, marriage, and women's desires. Chaucer develops her character Gap Tooth earthy old hag who is honest witty and funny so through the character of wife of bath uh, chaucer is actually trying to criticize the church operation of women and he he deliberately makes uh, wife of bath to speak freely about sex marriage and uh, women's desires okay so the next question is question number 17 if the gold rusts what can iron do okay so which pilgrims uh, repeats these words often in the prologue okay uh, so the words if the gold rusts what can iron do the pilgrim who often repeated these words is dash okay and the options are option number a option a the summoner option b the friar option c the monk or option d the poor person Okay, so which character utters these words often uh, in the prologue? So the right answer for this question is Option D, the poor person. Okay, the, unlike the friar or the monk who fails to practice what they, what they preach, the person lives the gospel he teaches by being holy and virtuous in all things giving the poor while he himself lives a life of poverty and visiting his widely spaced parishioners rain or shrine so unlike friar and monk uh, the poor person is actually actually truthful to his, towards his job right okay so moving on to the next question okay question number 18 he who plays the bagpipe well and leads the pilgrims with music is option number a the parson option number b the miller option number c and the summoner or option d the carpenter okay so who is the pilgrim who plays the bagpipe uh, very well and who is leading the pilgrims with his music okay the right answer for this question is option number option b the miller okay the miller is one of the pilgrims on the trip uh, to canterbury is uh, he is a large brawny man known for his prowess as a wrestler 
Chaucer says that because of the Miller's strength and temperament, he always wins when he participates in wrestling matches on festival day. Okay, moving on to the next question. Question, question number 19. In the prologue, he is a cheat and greedy man who excels, who excels himself in singing or preaching. He is okay. Option A, the summoner. Option B, the parson. Option C, the knight. Or option D, the partner. So, who in the prologue is a cheat and greedy man and who who excels himself in singing or preaching? Okay, the right answer for this question is. Option B, the summoner. The summoner is a church official who abuses his power to extract bribes off the books, making his profession one that is uh, disparaged and uh, considered corrupt. He also controls the younger people in his diocese and uh, makes them do what he wants. Okay. Okay, moving on to the last question of... Uh, today's video and uh, question number 20 is and French is spake full fair and fatally uh, after the school of Stratford at Beau for French of Paris was to her unknown okay these words uh, refer to okay, who utters these words or who who is referred into these words in the, into the prologue of Canterbury Tales Option A, the wife of Bath. Option B, Julie. Option D, Priores. Or option D, the queen. Okay, the right answer for this question is option B, the Priores. Okay, the Priores is one of the main characters of the Canterbury Tales. Her real name is Madame Eglantine. And she is fourth in the list of people discussed uh, by the host and has one of the longer descriptions. She is also the first religious figure discussed in the book, which shows a certain preference for the progress. Okay, so with this we come to an end of today's video. So, okay, in the next video we will be discussing some more questions about English literature, some more MCQs about, about English literature. And uh, I am aware that this is among one of our longest videos and uh, we will try to make it uh, some, some shorter in the next video and uh, please do subscribe to our channel and uh, we will be uh, posting the videos more regularly now. So please do subscribe and uh, like the videos, like the video if you like our content. Thank you so much for watching.